Hey guys, it is Clary Berry here with the Virgo horoscope for the, well, really the 13th through the 20th or so. Um, but we're not going to revisit the 13th in as much as... Well, we're going to look at the planets changing, but we've already looked at the moon's effect on us for last week. So be sure to check out that video. Now you can be here for a Virgo for anywhere in your chart, especially your personal planets and your big three. Also cusp and cross watchers are always welcome. Trust that you have the resources to get through the challenges before you. You do. You've got what it takes. You've got everything you need. So the, so yeah, again, check out the last video, the 13th and the 14th, we do have Mars going into Sagittarius and Mercury moving into Capricorn. So, <coughs> excuse me. So Mars in Sagittarius, you know, can be, um, for you, it's in your fourth house. So you're, uh, kind of, more, your actions have more to do with, you know, the nurturing, the providing, the um, also somewhat of going within, just wanting that peace at home and with some habits. It's like you're really trying to create habits and cycles in your life that are stable. And, you know, you might be starting to change little things, do little things differently. Again, spend more time at home around this time, um, or just be, you know, working on projects at home or, you know, working on yourself, honestly at home, but there's definitely some creative, some passionate sparks there with this Sagittarius energy, um, optimism, you know, and again, can be a kind of just passionate about the home life in general. And, can be somewhat of the relationships, but really mostly uh, it has to do with the environment. You know, it's like setting up this nice, peaceful energy, making small changes to the home can um, really be, you know, really just what you feel like doing at this time. And again, the resources um, that you have right now, you can use what you already have and just move it in a different way or store it in a different way so that it's better. You're able to resource it. It's like shopping at home, going through things. <clears throat> Anyways, we also have on the 13th, the Mer uh, Mercury is going into Capricorn in your fifth house. So again, w as with Mars in Sagittarius, you know, this homey energy, changing things at home, doing things, focus on the home has been, you know, your major Sagittarius energy for this Sagittarius season and will continue to be until the 21st. Now the Capricorn energy, okay, Capricorn in your fifth house, that's where all of your Capricorn season is going to be, okay? So we're working things out. We're definitely changing, especially with this full moon this week. We're able to completely keep on this continuum of change. Okay. And you're wanting to, again, there's a passion, there's creative energy, there's expressive energy. Okay. There is sort of almost like a serving, a helping, you know, again, you're, you're helping others at the same time that you're able to enjoy yourself in, in what you're creating can benefit others. But again, it's part of your process and it's part of what you, your mission at this time, what you just are really enamored with, you know, again, there is a sense of making things right, having that justice, doing things right, getting things right for, for yourself, but for other people as well. So again, part of your, whatever you create, you know, whether it's writing or whether it's art or whether it's, you know, whatever your, your kind of passionate expression is in life it's like, this is a time to enjoy that. This keeps you balanced at that time to have a passion like that. And we all need one. You don't need to even consider yourself an artist. You know, it could be sports. It could be whatever you work on that you again, love and just feel passionate about and that you really enjoy doing. Um, and it can be a multitude of different things. It's just enjoying yourself, balancing out, you know, being smart about the way that you enjoy yourself too, for kind of that, almost that long-term um, you know, cycles that we're going through. Okay. So let's get into this a little bit more. And again, that Capricorn energy in your fifth house, creating, enjoying yourself, there's flirtation, there's, um, you know, possible sexual energy going on there, um, and play and fun, you know, but again, it's part of this serving as well. It's like, you're going to have fun setting up certain, you know, it's like serving at the party or, um, you know, things like that. That's where you feel good this time of year. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and look a little bit closer. 14th and 15th, the moon is in Taurus in your ninth house. And this is, we're exploring, okay? You're in the, in the mode, like your Zen mode is going to be learning, getting deeper into a subject, becoming the authority on a certain subject, and, you know, maybe being able to do something with it. But there's a lot of exploration, trying new things, doing new things, expanding your mind, wrapping your mind around something again, something new in such a way where, you know, wow, you're getting deep into something. Again, the authority comes through there. You are, you know, allowing yourself to be the authority on something maybe kind of specific here that you're learning about. And that is where you're going to want to be. That's what's kind of fun for you uh, for the really the 14th. And again, the 15th. Okay. So really also looking at some shadow work can also really help to expand your horizons here and help you explore some deeper depths rather than just exploring things on the outside and things on, you know, in the, in the material world, you know, don't forget that you can go in and explore some more spiritual sides and definitely shadow work is popping up can really, can really get you somewhere. Uh, we always talk about shadow work as being able to flip the switch. It automatically makes changes for you and helps you to see things in a different way. And it does help you expand your horizons. Um, so I think that's going to be really good for the 14th and the 15th. Okay, now the 16th, 17th, and 18th, we have Moon in Gemini in your 10th house. We're going to be looking at how we're perceived by other people. We're going to be looking at our long-term achievements, planning. How can we become who we want to become in the long run? How can we get what we want here, whether it's, you know, in relationships, whether it's in jobs and careers and money, the achievement, the power, the status, you know, again, the label sometimes comes through. What you want in the future um, is certainly on your mind and how you're going to get it. You know, it's almost like outlining the steps, long-term planning here for Gemini. You're going to be very analytical. You're going to be able to look at the past and say, you know what? This didn't work. This did work. So now we're going to slightly, you know, change. And again, you're learning something new here with the full moon and also sometimes able to release something okay and that is whatever your possible release here you know could be even a sexual release helps you clear your mind here and you're able to again take better steps now to achieve better things in the future okay so you're just kind of going to be again cognizant of the steps you're taking right now that are going to lead you to success or not, you know, for the future and, and wanting to do, to take those best steps. Okay. So the 19th and the 20th, again, you're part of a group here. You're part of a group. There's, there's sort of this caring nature, taking care of others, taking care of people. You're very busy right now, taking care of other people. Um, and you're, you're, you're also busy with these goals. I really feel like there's a, almost like either a relationship goal here or, it could just be groups, relationship with yourself, on how you come across to others. It's all important. You're, you know, this inner, it keeps coming up, you know, this inner relationship, your inner, and, and not only that, but doing the shadow work helps every relationship that you have. It really, really does. And it's going to help you get somewhere in your relationship faster than and work and work. It helps you at work. I think the shadow work really does help with every aspect of your life. So check out the shadow work playlist or the switch program. It also has starts out with the shadow work. It's the same thing. It'll take you into deeper healing if you want to go that far. But yeah, you're, you're happiest as feeling part of the group. You're going to want to be around people, you know, be friendly with people. Uh, it keeps you kind of in a harmony and cooperating is, you know, just, it's what it's all about there for the 19th and the 20th. And it kind of helps you. It just helps you feel better to give. It helps you feel better to do, to do things for others right now. And it's such a Virgo thing, but it's really coming through, you know, group efforts, doing things as a group, kind of letting go of that selflessness is how you shine and how you, you know, 
can feel the most. It's almost like a, the, the, lung, the love language is service here and you're getting prime opportunities. In fact, maybe a, quite a lot of opportunities here to show that nurturing side, show that helpful and service side of yourself. And, and it, it makes you feel more connected to others to be able to have those opportunities. So, so yeah, again, you have the resources to help others to get through any challenges that you have. It's going to, again, the challenges that you go through with other people right now are going to make you feel closer to others. And it's a really beautiful thing. I hope this is a magical time for you. Again, a little bit of shadow work goes a really long way here. So check that out. Everything is in order. Much love, many blessings. Don't forget to watch your other personal planets and custom cross watchers. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.